Good afternoon, I'm Raylene Ramsey. This is your afternoon news fix for Thursday, the 31st of October. Crews not knowing how to turn off Aratere's autopilot is to blame for the ferry's grounding in June. The Transport Accident Investigation Commission's published initial findings on the Inter-Islander ferry's beaching off Picton. It's confirmed earlier reports a steering issue was to blame. Investigator Naveen Kozupakalam says turning off autopilot required pressing a button for five seconds. What we have established is that they did not know that they had to hold the button down, nor were they aware that they did not know. Associate Health Minister Casey Costello says the Health Ministry dropped the ball by not informing her about a conflict. Here's political reporter Demelza Jackson. The Ministry has apologised for not passing on the message a staffer related to Labour's Aisha Verrill was working on smoking reforms. Costello says she doesn't feel the Ministry's served the programme of work well. She says there have been issues from the start with documents leaked to the media and out of whack advice based on old data. Our newsrooms approach the Ministry for comment. A person's died after fleeing police and crashing into another vehicle in Rotorua's Ofata. Police say a vehicle of interest took off after being signalled to stop on Hopapa Street, but after a brief chase, it crashed on Vaughan Road. The driver died at the scene and the passenger received minor injuries. Two people in the other vehicle suffered moderate injuries. Meanwhile, the police watchdogs found an Auckland officer who fired at an armed man in a fleeing car in 2021 was in the wrong. Police confronted the man at Ellerslie after a motorway pursuit. The IPCA's found even though the passenger took aim at the officer, he shouldn't have fired, given the risk of hitting the driver and civilians. It's found officers were justified in later shooting the offender when he aimed at them in Hillsborough. Police say the officer only had seconds to decide. Thankfully, no one else was hurt. Labour MP Ginny Anderson says resharing an explicit joke about King Charles on her personal social media was inexcusable. The former police minister is again apologising for posting it on her Instagram account, but says she's not been told off by her party. The meme showed a photo of our Prime Minister and the King in Samoa and compared a fold in the King's trousers to female anatomy. Anderson says it was bad behaviour. I didn't comment. I shared something else that someone else had said. But commenting on appearances is is not the appropriate thing for MPs to be doing. The government's looking into changing courtroom rules to let people attend via Zoom. Courts Minister Nicole McKee says regulations around remote technology were put in place 14 years ago and haven't changed since. Political editor Jason Walls has more. McKee says she wants a modern, fit-for-purpose law that enables increased remote participation, which will promote efficiencies in court. Remote access, she says, will reduce the costs and time required to come to court in person and would benefit people with a disability or those who live rurally. To sport, Auckland FC is adamant there's no credibility to suggestions of planned fan violence at Saturday's A-League football derby against the Wellington Phoenix in the capital. Diamonds netball coach Stacey Marinkovic believes the player pipeline to her world champion side is being hindered by the influx of internationals playing super netball in Australia. Prop to Mighty Williams believes the All Blacks head into a crunch three weeks in Europe, better equipped to face the rigours of Test Rugby than they were earlier in the season. I'm Raylene Ramsey and that is your latest news fix. We'll be back with the next update tomorrow morning from the News Talk ZB Newsroom.